I actually didn't particularly want to have a career in journalism. Um, I just um, I was looking to get out of my other job, and um, and. I'd been learning web design as part of that job. Um, I'd also learned how to work with spreadsheets and databases, which, um, which didn't become immediately useful, but then became useful later on. Um, so I, I was working editing a magazine about the internet and technology. Um, and so that's really how I got into the field, was, was reporting on technology and um, managing websites for publishers, so I then moved on to a, a, an educational magazine publisher um, and then um, took a job at the university teaching multimedia. And I guess I realised that I, I really quite enjoyed learning new things, um, exploring new things and, uh, and experimenting. So I remember in 2004, um, st starting a blog to, to kind of get my uh, to experiment with that um, and teaching online journalism um, starting to teach online journalism back then so um, so that's I, I guess that's a very um, jumbled description of, 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 of how I've got to this place and, and at the same time you know I still have the same anxieties that students have about there being so many things to learn and so many things that you need to know. And I think you just have to accept that is, you will never know everything. And there are so many things that, that you need to know. And, and all the people who it seems like they know everything and they know more than you, it's not. They just know a few things that you don't and you know a few things that they don't. And you, want, you have to work with other people because there's always going to be gaps in your knowledge. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, I will always feel that way, but, uh, but there are things I should be knowing and, um, and you know, you, can, you will spend your life doing that. What can a media person specialised in mobile journalism and online platforms uh, do today? What are their options, Paul? Really, I mean, there are so many options for journalists in terms of storytelling, in terms of um, research, in terms of distribution. And that's one of the biggest challenges for journalists now is, is actually making the right decisions, choosing the right platform for their particular audience, the right type of media, the right format for telling a story. And, and half the ability really is what's now called content strategy, essentially. So being strategic and making those choices, there's no reason why every story you tell should be a 300 word text article. As, as might have been the case if you worked for, for newspapers in the past. Really, it's too easy sometimes to say, we need this technology because everyone else is doing it. Uh, we had that with iPhone apps. Everyone had to have an iPhone app and then an iPad app. Um, everyone had to have a Twitter account, a Facebook account. At the moment, everyone's got to have bots. Uh, everyone's got to do VR. And... Um, you know, the first thing should always be people, the audience that you're targeting at. So um, who are you trying to reach? Who are you talking to? And what platforms, what technology do they use? And when, um, you know, people will consume different media at different times. Uh, and that all leads to a, a, an effective decision in terms of telling the story in the right way across the right platforms for the right people. As a professor, Paul, teaching at Birmingham City University School of Media, you've always been available to help and always been really generous. How do you manage to balance journalists with uh, your university job and with really helping students all the time? Uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 that's a difficult question to answer. Um, I, I certainly prioritise, so I, I have certain systems in the way that emails are filtered, um, and students are always, for me, the, the first priority, so I, I try to uh, respond to their communication first. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be quite disciplined in how much time I spend on different tasks, um, so I, I will try and put aside certain time to do certain things. Um, I'll actually try not to respond 
to, to emails too much generally because they just generate more emails and you can spend all day doing emails and I think email is one of the biggest problems of our time, how we actually manage that without just spending all of our time sending emails. Um, so trying to only check them a couple of times a day, use filters, um, have a certain day of the week when I, when I kind of reply to all the ones that weren't urgent. Um, and kind of having those sorts of routines and having other rules like not going to, you know, not being on the computer after nine o'clock at night. And um, um, I think bookmarking as well is a big part of that. I bookmark a lot of things um, and that makes, that means I can work very quickly when I have to do certain, uh, like writing a book, I've got all that material already archived and, and accessible so it's it, so it's easy to do that and also the more you do things the faster you get at it so I've been doing a lot of this for a lot of time now and and so I'm, I'm quicker than I used to be. <laughs> Thank you.